My name is Kelly Hosking and I'm an Environmental Health Officer with Gisborne District Council. Part of my role as a Food Act verifier is going into businesses and checking that they're following um, their food control plan for best practice food safety and running their businesses. It gets me out in the community, uh, interacting with a lot of different people and yeah, seeing different things every day. Being a Food Act verifier, some of the skills that are really important is um, being a people person. You're going into people's businesses, you're interacting with them and um, being approachable and friendly is, is really important. It's as important as being um, quite direct and assertive when, when you need to be. And people can be assured that the food that they're buying is safe and the businesses as well are assured that what they're doing is providing safe food. The new Simply Safe and Suitable plan is different from the template plan um, in that it's much, much simpler for um, business operators to follow and also for verifiers to, to follow as well and guide. The layout of, of the Simply Safe and Suitable plan is much more common sense. It's laid out um, in much more of a flow of how a business would use it. Um, it's much better in that each uh, card is set out, no, do, show, so it's very simple for people to follow. It's a very short summary of what they need to know, what they need to do, and they know exactly what they need to show the verifier when the verifier comes to do their checks. Some of the concerns that businesses might have is, um, particularly with businesses that have been on plan for a long time, they. Um, you know, they think, oh, I'm going to have to do it all over again, it's going to be hard, I have to train all my staff again. Um, and from a verifier perspective, um, perhaps it seems more, a little more difficult because it's different. The layout of it's very different. Um, the content of it is very different. It's much more s simple. So how we have to design our verification around that is different. So the Simply Safe and Suitable template in itself is a, a lot more practical than, than the template. Uh, usually when I do a verification, I actually ask the operator to take the lead and show me around the business and um, sort of describe what it is that they, they do in relation to the plan. And when I do a verification, we do get the premises to show, you know, do show, that's the, but it's usually the first part of the verification, that's kind of the icebreaker for us. And then we um, match it up with what the plan says just to make sure that what they're showing us, what they're telling us is consistent with what's in the plan. The general feeling about the Simply Safe and Suitable plan has been quite positive from our business operators. They feel that it's much easier to follow and it gives them a bit more confidence about what we are expecting from them when we come into a verification. I'm not sure that it appeals to one person over another. I think generally the Simply Safe and Suitable plan has been quite well received because it's much simpler than, than the old template and how it's applied to their business is very much a practical common sense document compared to the old one. Less, less um, record keeping requirements, um, the fact that they can actually have a discussion about some of the things they're doing or actually demonstrate some of the things that they do, like checking for pests. They show us how, to, how they do it rather than ticking a box every day. Um, you know, washing hands, that's, you know, common sense. Have they got soap and towels? Are people washing their hands? So there's less need to write things down and more just showing us what they do. So in food businesses where the, the plan itself is quite well established, um, the way that the plan is set up is a lot easier for people to use as a reference. So a quick reference, they need to check how they do something. It's, it's in an order that, that makes sense to them. Some of the ways that I've seen food businesses using the Simply Safe and Suitable plan is um, it's useful as a, as a reference document. So the plan itself is set out, um, laid out in a way that's obvious and practical. So for example, where um, they might have a new staff member on board who isn't quite familiar with some of the processes. They can just find the page that they're looking for, um, say for checking their cooked chicken temperatures, and it's, and it's right there for them, not having to dig around. <laughs> um, the same with um, checking their fridge temperatures. It's, um, it's easy to find 
and gives them a really clear explanation of what they need to do and what they need to record. Some verifiers have um, maybe not embraced the Simply Safe um, template, but because it is quite different from from what we've started out on, it's it's a lot simpler. And I know there have been concerns about there not being enough information in there. Um, I quite like it personally because it's it lays out for a business operator exactly what they need to do. It makes it easy for the business operator to understand and I think that's the whole point of this is that it's easy for people to understand what they need to do for food safety. Um, also the way it's laid out is much simpler to go through people through with people if they're not quite on the right track, directing them to the part of the plan um, that tells them what they need to do and um, the show part is, is quite important. That's exactly what we're looking for when they when we go in and do a verification and it's very clear to the business operator that that's what we're looking for. So businesses on the Simply Safe and Suitable Plan know exactly what records they need to keep because it tells them exactly what they need to keep. It's very easy. We always direct people to the pencil icon in the, in the plan itself and say if this is here you need to write it down. It makes it really easy for the business operators. When I'm checking a food business for, for their records, um, I'm looking that they're written down somewhere. Um, some people choose to use the old um, format for record keeping because that works for them. Some new businesses are choosing to adopt that because it's the simplest way for them to do that. But other businesses like flexibility, so they might have electronic records, they might write things on a whiteboard, they might just write it down in a notebook somewhere. Um, but when I go in and verify, uh, the most important thing is um, that it's actually written down some, somewhere. So it's important for a food business to keep records because it's the evidence that they're actually undertaking the tasks that are set out in their plan every day. Because obviously we're not in there checking every day to show that they're, they're doing that. And um, so yeah, it's really, really important for them to do, do that, keep their records and um, note down when things go wrong. So I tell people when I'm verifying them that um, we're not looking for things when they go wrong. We're looking for things where they've identified that and done something to, to correct that. So um, yeah, it's good for us to see that. Uh, keeping accurate food records can benefit a food business um, by showing that uh, what they're doing is consistent that they're able to identify problems. And if a problem did arise, then they'd be able to show um, what's been happening prior to that. It's important for a food business to keep accurate records um, because it shows that they've been maintaining their food safety systems um, consistently. And in the event that something went wrong, that would be the evidence that um, they've been managing food safety consistently over that period of time. Um, so they might need records um, to show that their fridge temperatures have been maintained at a safe temperature um, where someone may have reported illness from eating at their premises. Um, they might need to show that their cooking temperatures are, are consistent and they're cooking th their chicken or their, their mince to a safe temperature consistently to show that um, the incidence of illness is unlikely to have come from their premises. So a food business um, may need their records in a case where there's been a complaint about their food. Um, so a verifier would go in outside of a normal uh, verification to check the records to um, really determine whether the food complaint is um, valid and whether the processes that have been used in the food premises could have contributed to something going wrong with the food or whether the processes have prevented something going wrong with, with the food. Um, based on, on the records that have been kept, if it was established that something had gone wrong at, at the premises, um, that's where we would, I, with the business operator, identify what had gone wrong and agree on um, some corrective actions to improve the systems um, that were in place or establish systems if they hadn't been there before um, to prevent things from, from happening again, from going wrong. As a verifier, um, 
I would regard a record as anything that is documented that's related to um, the processes that, that they're using. So in some cases, uh, people might write things up on a, on a whiteboard and take a photo of that, that's email it to themselves. Um, and that's what they do every day. So as long as it's consistent, it's dated, and it's acceptable, accessible um, to the operator and the verifier, then I'd consider that to be an acceptable record. The level of record keeping, um, well, it really depends on what the business is doing. So um, with the Simply Safe and Suitable Plan, most businesses that we've had contact with um, are happier that they, they have less record keeping requirements and the level of record keeping is really based on what it is that they're, they're doing. But as a verifier, you never look at the records in isolation of everything else. You're looking at what's happening in, in the premises, um, having conversation with um, staff at the premises and you know the, they all build a total picture. So I think the records really support what you see and what people say. Food business um, usually finds out what they need to do and what they need to know um, from first contact with us here at Council. Um, if it's a new business, we usually direct them to the Ministry for Primary Industries website to have a look at what, um, what they need to do, the steps they need to take to, to get registered. If they are needing some support with um, going on, on the plan, we do offer some guidance where we talk about the food control plan and how, sort of have a discussion about how they might apply it in their business. But really, we put a lot of emphasis on the responsibility for um, the plan and the food safety being the business operator. So it's really important that they read and understand the plan um, and then look at how they apply it in their business. So if a food business is not sure um, about their plan, and what they're doing, uh, we encourage them to talk to us. Um, we don't tell them what to do, rather we guide them to the part of the plan that they need to read and understand um, to apply in their business. After we give some basic guidance around um, how the food control plan works, it's really the responsibility of the business to, to set it up in their business um, to, and to have a think about what food safety processes they need to apply um, yeah, and put them in place, um, keep the relevant records and documents ready for verification. So it's always the food business's responsibility for making safe and suitable food. When something goes wrong in a food business, um, it's really important that the food business can identify what's gone wrong and put appropriate um, actions in place to, to fix the problem and, and change things to stop it from going wrong again and documenting that. Um, we always encourage people to write down as much as they can. You know, as a verifier, we're not going in there to catch them out. Um, something that we really um, encourage our food businesses to do here is you know identify the problem um, but don't get too hung up on it what's important is that you know what the problem is and that you do something to fix it so and that's what we look for when we do a verification as a, as a verifier um, it's, it's one of the challenges that we face is going from a system where we tell people what to do all the time we go into a business as a health inspector and see, see a problem, we tell them how to fix it. But as a verifier, we're going, we're, we're asking the business operator to lead us through what they do, show us, tell us what you do, and then if we identify a problem, it's actually working with the business operator on finding a solution. So um, the guidance we give them is fairly limited because we have to be careful that we're not going back into the inspector role and telling people what to do. We really have to make sure that we're just guiding them to the part of the plan that they need to review um, and base their actions or improvements on what the, what the plan is telling them that they need to do. I think uh, one of the most important things for a business to get right while working under the 
food control plan is just making sure that um, all the staff are trained under the food control plan and are aware of, of the processes or the policies that the food control plan set out for the business. A lot of businesses, um, particularly the smaller sort of owner operators, they only have a small number of staff. They take on the responsibility for all the record keeping in the whole plan and it just doesn't work. You know, it's everybody has responsibility in the business for food safety. So everybody in the business really needs to have a good understanding of, of what what the plan is, what it means, and what they need to do in accordance with, with the plan. So in that staff training is really important because you've got that evidence there in that staff training um, record that they do understand and they are doing what the plan says that they need to do. I think from a business operator's perspective, being verified is probably a little bit daunting. Um, Especially if it's their first verification, if, you know, if they've never been verified before under, you know, operating under a food control plan. Um, so, it, and I don't think it should feel feel scary for them. Um, I think, you know, they should feel comfortable with with a verifier coming into their business and comfortable to ask ask us a lot of questions as well. As a verifier, when I go into a food business, um, I'm not there to catch them out or find things that are going wrong. Um, I'm really interested in them being able to show me what they do and how they do things and then relating that back to the, the food control plan. Uh, when we do find things that have gone wrong or they, they haven't covered something um, in the business or there's something missing, it's a good opportunity to have a discussion around what they need to do and again directing them back to the food control plan to show them that this is this is what you need to do and just really working with them on um, understanding that so then they can put those things into, into action in their business. When a business knows they're being verified, it is really important for them to be prepared. So the things that they need to um, really make sure they have ready is making sure that they've read and understood the plan and they've completed completed the plan. So there's some parts of the plan where they might need to write something down, they might need to tick a box. Um, so it's really important that they've, they've done that as their first step. And then of course, starting their documentation and record keeping. Um, they need to have something to show us. And then of course, when we're doing our show tell that what they are doing what they're actually doing is consistent with what um, they say that they're doing in their plan and then in their record keeping as well. So, you know, working under the food control plan, it's your business, it's your plan, it's your responsibility. So food safety is your responsibility. Well, I think you've got to you've got to walk in, even if it's a premises that you're quite familiar with. Every time you go in there, you have to go in with a um, like an open mind because you're you're verifying based on what you see and what they show you and what, what, you, what they tell you. So you do have to have a lot of awareness of what's, what's happening around. Everyone's, diff everyone's different, every business is different. So it's, it's just really important to see that they're using food safety proactively in their business because their businesses are important to them and food safety is important to us. So we meet in the middle to, to get a good outcome really kind of do, do a scan, but sometimes it's, it's subconscious because they're not kind of pointing out any one thing in particular. You're looking at, at the bigger picture. So you just kind of take note of a lot of things and then when you're having your discussion with the operator and the staff and then looking at the, at the plan, that's when you're really matching things up from what you've seen from first entry and then as you progress through. And some of the things that might not seem very risky on its own, could create a risk combined with other things that are happening happening in the, in the business. So well, I always think the biggest risk is actually your food handlers and that's not something that you see straight away. A lot of that's from observation through throughout the process of, of the verification. So you might, you might walk in and everything looks really, really perfect, but you might have a few food handlers that aren't trained properly or aren't following the training um, that's been you know, set out in their, in their food plan and that'll be the biggest risk for a premises in some instances. 
but it's not always that obvious when you when you first walk in. But because there's quite small businesses, um, you know, it's just good practice, you know, just being friendly to, to introduce yourself to, to the staff that are there and I mean, most of them know that you're coming and a little bit worried about it so it's, it's, I think it's quite important to have that icebreaker at the beginning um, so people feel comfortable to talk to you when, when you ask them the questions. Um, sometimes we won't talk to, to everyone, we might just um, speak with a couple of the key, key staff that are there. It really depends on the type of business and, and what you're looking for in, in the verification. So the new Simply Safe and Suitable plan works best for business because it helps us make food safety simple and it lets the business get on with what they do best.